So here's a tip for you. The day after a storm is going to be pretty turbulent. Even if you have blue skies and sunshine and it looks absolutely perfect, the day after a storm is usually pretty funky. The, uh, you know, if you got super skills, doesn't really matter. You can fly whenever the heck you want. If you got a super skills and you have a dominator and a flat top, it's just not that big of a deal. But it's something to think about and or for people who don't have proper training, really don't fly till you get proper training, which is super training. If you don't have super training, you don't have proper training. And if you want to disagree, just post a video of yourself reverse kiting with no hands. Then post a video of yourself walking up a vertical wall. Then post a video of yourself kiting up a fence post and stopping on top with one foot. You either have these skills or you don't. If you can't kite up a pole or a post and stand perfectly on top, balancing yourself there with the glider, then you don't have the ability to stop a collapse or prevent a collapse. So it's that same exact skill to control that altitude of your body perfectly that it takes to keep that glider open. So you either have super skills or you don't. It has nothing to do with sales pitch or marketing. It's just truth is truth. You either have those skills, you can either reverse kite with no hands, demonstrating you really truly do understand the full dynamics of glider control, or you simply don't have that kind of control. If you don't have control of your glider, what the heck are you trying to get into the air for on an aircraft you can't legitimately control? So that is a bad idea. The, uh, you get people saying, oh, but we only fly in perfect weather. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Not even the weatherman can predict the weather. Nobody can predict the weather. Doesn't work that way. I have been just slammed on perfectly cool morning, winter, you know, days. And just whap, you could go through a shear layer or a rotor of some sort or just something freaking funky. You just, you just don't know. And those, you know, newbies, Joe Blow with his 250 flights who thinks he's experienced, you know, it, it just doesn't know. You have to trust and listen to those that have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours and flights in the air. Because you either, you either been through it or you're gonna. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a maybe, it's going to happen. So, as long as you got super skills and the right gear, when that happens, it's a total non-issue. You just fly right through it, keep on flying. And you just, you know, mental note noted. <laughs> it's a little rough after a storm. So definitely do not fly without super training. And to all the guys out there acting as instructors, same exact thing times 10. If you can't even reverse kite with no hands or kite up a post, you know, and balance your body perfectly with the glider, then what the heck are you training other people for? That is seriously not cool. It is not about getting in the air. It is about having the real skills to be able to perfectly control the glider. And that's all there is to it. So. Oh yeah, nice and trashy. Dominator, baby. Trashy day, trims up, no hands. Why am I confident to fly this glider? Trims up with no hands in trashy air. It's because I've tested the crap out of this glider from years and years of experience. And yes, crap can happen, just like I said. That's why you fly a Dominator. So when you get nailed with something that's so violent, not even super skills can prevent the collapse. That's when the Dominator saves your butt and it just pops out and keeps on flying and doesn't give a crap. This is aviation. This is not an ATV. 
This is not where you go, yeah, here's the throttle, yeah, and you kind of shift like this, and yeah, just, you know, go slow, try it out. It does not work that way. There is no go slow, try it out. You're either flying and in the air and in danger, or you're not. Now, the fact is, zero people have ever died in the history of the sport on a flat top. So as long as you have the right gear, the safety is kind of ridiculous. I mean, it is pretty dang idiot proof because us idiots and everybody has their idiot moments. Everybody has their stupid moment. That's it. It's when you make that oops, the dominator and a flat top have saved people's lives over and over and over and over. If you crash up a dead end canyon, because you didn't buy the prop the manufacturer told you to, then, you know, at least you do have the flat top crumple zone there to save your life. Or if you fly into high tension power lines and you're 70 years old and crash straight out of the sky into a pile of rocks, bam, you get up and walk away without a scratch on you. And it was because he was flying a flat top. Bingo, crumple zone. Dominator controls your descent rate, even if it's falling straight down and the flat top controls the impact by absorbing that impact away from your spine. It's pretty, you know, it's not rocket science, it's not magic, and it's not sales pitch. It's, you either ha have these safety features or you don't have these safety features. That is all there is to it. So, check this bad boy out. See what she's gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. has that power to climb in a spiral. So if you wanna, or need to launch in a small as possible area safely, and wanna have the power to climb out, you get yourself a flat top ninja. It's also so lightweight, my 12 year old flies the same unit. And he can foot launch it in nil wind up here in Utah at high altitude. So it's about stacking the odds in your favor, getting the right tool for the job. bunch of deer. Deer everywhere. Rocket man! Woo! Got a full throttle. Ninja power. That's awesome. Yo! Ura! It just never gets old! It's just seriously fun! The funnest is not hanging out at 3,000 feet doing nothing. It's flying low and enjoying the scenery and seeing stuff as you go by and looking at trees that look like scarecrows and jumping over trees that get in your way. Look at that, climbed right over that bad boy. No problem. You wanna see that again? Let's do that again. Let's show you some ninja climb. It's ninja power. Why did we call it the ninja? Because it absolutely destroys everything else so bad it utterly obliterates any glimmer of hope they have at competing with the ninja. That's why it's called the ninja. Woo! And that's called the skunk. Smelled that one. Okay, flying at this tree, head on here, ro do 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 ground level, and boom! And up we go! And over we go! 
So you see that flat top can literally climb at like a 45 degree angle for a, you know, about 60 feet or so. Then you're gonna, you know, slow down and you're gonna need to regain your, your airspeed just like an airplane does. But you have that climb rate. Look at that, whoop, up we go. Over the trees. There it is, and trees. And up we go. Cleared the trees. And around we go. Climb rate, Ninja Power! So if a power line pops out in front of you, and you go full throttle, add some brake, yes, you can pop right up over it. That makes a huge safety difference over all other units that don't have that climb rate and lightweight unit. First of all, you need the lightest possible weight because the more weight on your body, the more likely you are to fall down. Second, you want the most power for that lightweight so that you have the ability to outclimb sinking air or climb through rotor or climb over power lines or just launch in a smaller area safely where you know you can outclimb objects. Flying Wimpy Motors is really kind of funky. It's a totally different experience. I mean, if you fly some piece of crap mini plane with a top 80, it changes your whole, you know, enjoyment of the sport because no longer can you be carefree and just have fun. When you're flying a gutless paramotor, you have to be looking a quarter mile in front of you where you're going to be because you have to time exactly where you're going to be and at what altitude you're going to be when you get there because you do not have the climb rate. If you wanted to climb that 80 foot tree, you would have to start from the other end of the freaking field. So you really have to predict where you're going to be a long time before you get there. So very, very important, and it really adds a huge level of safety to just have that power so you don't have to be thinking, you know, a quarter mile ahead of yourself. You could just think about having fun and enjoying yourself, and if something does pop out at you, bam, you can hit that throttle, and in a second, you're up over it, and you clear it safely, no problem, done, it's over. Not even something to think about. Flat top ninja power. So that is, that's, I mean, that's the ticket. There's so many little things you just don't think of, you know, when you're talking to people that don't know what the heck they're talking about. You talk to Joe Blow and he's like, oh yeah, you got to get this unit. Oh yeah, everybody flies this. Who gives a crap? You got to talk about specifics. What's the power? What's the weight? Let's see the power. Show me the power. Show me yourself climbing over a 50-foot tree in less than 50 foot. Show me yourself fly tandem, you know, with 600 pounds. Uh, people can talk, talk, talk. But very, very critical in this sport to say, show me. If someone says they're the best instructor in the world, show me. <laughs> show me the skills of your students. Let's see it. Let's see your students do what super students can do. Or let's see the dang instructor do what super students can do. Could almost no instructor in the world can even do that. And so how should you respond? That's right. Show me. Well, look at my, what, 700 and almost 750 videos. I've showed me over and over and over and over. And so you can just look at what they do. Others can either do it or they can't. Yes, this is the coolest, funnest thing you will ever do in your lifetime. If, don't miss the if, and that if is if you get super training and if you get a flat top specifically.